Welcome to a special edition of the Liberty Mastermind Podcast. I'm Ox, along with my co-hosts, Captain Jack and Pal Leo. In this special edition, we'll be briefly discussing the riots in Charlottesville and the allegations that the police were supposed to help, but they did not. So over the past handful of weeks, I've been kind of focused on some new job possibilities, had my head down, polishing up my CV, cover letter, touching base with my network, interviewing, all that that goes along with a a job search. Um, That is to say, I haven't really kept up with the news lately. In fact, I don't I don't really keep up with the news in general because what we see on the legacy news is typically outside of my sphere of influence. Uh, For instance, the. 15, 20, 30 minutes I spend tinkering around with the irrelevant to my life news, I could be focusing on how we bring value to the Liberty Mastermind Podcast Nation, or I could be playing with my chickens, whatever. So all that said, today I did jump on the news and see all the brouhaha about Charlottesville, the protesters, the counter protesters, people get run over, so on. And according to the CNN article that we found online, people are blaming the police for the violence. Um, so we're going to kind of chime in on this, maybe deconstruct it a little bit or add our own liberty take on it. But I got a couple quotes from some people here. Jason Kessler said, instead of maintaining law and order, the police purposely created the catastrophe that led to a melee and the streets of Charlottesville, and the death of a counter-protester. So riddle me this, Mr. Kessler. Who holds the primary responsibility for your safety? I'll give you a hint. It's you. Okay, here's another quote. and We'll post this in the show notes. A gentleman named Hank, or Hawk Newsom. That's actually kind of a cool name. President of Black Lives Matter of Greater New York said, The police actually allowed us to square off against each other. There were fights and the police were standing a block away the entire time. It's almost as if they wanted us to fight each other. How is it the policeman's job to be there to prevent you from squaring up against each other like your, I don't know, kindergartners in the playground? You're a grown man, Hawk Newsom. Come on now. Okay, so let's back up. 30,000 foot view. This, this, I don't know, soapbox, this goes back to a one-word reason that three of us are doing this show. It's all about empowerment, or you might even call it self-empowerment. So, folks, we're, we're giving our power away. We're giving it to somebody in Washington, D.C. We're giving it to somebody in our state capitol, our, our state and federal representatives, and, and our council members, and so on and so forth. Folks, it's time we take that power back. And, and put it right back squarely where it belongs, which is in our own hands. So I'm going to leave you one last thought. Here's some preventative medicine for you, because I, I like to focus on preventative medicine. Take responsibility for your own safety as if no one were going to come back you up. Food for thought. Jackie, Good you got stuff. anything? No, that was good. Um some people might not know what the sphere of influence is, so there, <laughs> there's there's a sphere around your life, and, and it's there's things that you can control, things that you can influence, and then things that you can't control or influence. So the, the, the sphere is the things that you can control. That is your sphere. And then outside of that is things that you can influence. But really, you need to focus on the things that you can control. You can't control these protests. You can't... Man, I'm just so blown away with all this crap. And I I don't even know where to start right now. Um, uh, I don't know. I I, I had thoughts all day, and now I'm kind of at a loss for words. (laughs) Well, we... We could say that this is a tactic that the media uses and the government uses all the time. Here's your shiny yeah, red ball. Focus exactly. on the things that you can't do anything about, and then maybe you won't focus on the things you can do something about. Right, and it's it's divide and conquer. 
And it's I mean, give, give them bread and circus. Yeah, exactly. I, uh, look at your sphere and tell me how many races you really know. Uh, and be serious about it. Don't don't say, well, he doesn't agree with my viewpoint, so therefore he's racist. That's that's bullshit. Like, how many people do you know that are truly racist? I don't know any. Maybe I'm maybe I'm the odd man out, but I don't know any, and I know lots of people. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. I'm familiar with too many people like that. Um, I can yeah, give you my take on it. Um, when I first I'll keep it short, and we're going to kind of do a special clip here, a short one. Um, when I first started at my law enforcement agency, I worked the front desk for a while until uh, my training spot opened up for the street. And I started getting phone calls where, you know, a girl or a guy would call and say, hey, this person that I have some type of relationship with, uh, I'm going to go pick up some items from their house because we broke up or we had a business fallout um, and I'm nervous. So can you have a police officer go with me to pick up my things. And my first, couple, my first couple days, I was like, that sounds reasonable. They're going to walk into a situation where people are going to be upset and might be fighting each other and they have a history. Yeah, let me uh, ask my boss. Let me see. So I'd say, hey, Sarge, uh, this person wants us to meet them somewhere so they can pick up some things from wherever. And they'd go, oh, do they have a court order? Because sometimes the court will say, like, if you, if you two... Like if the two of you are dating, right, or you're married and you fight each other physically and we arrest one or both of you, the judge will say, I am making kind of some type of substantive law here where the two of you cannot see each other unless an officer is present. That's, that's a court order, which is, has the effect of a type of law that can be enforced on just the two of you. So it's uh, kind of the rulings of a case that have a special procedure. So people would call and they'd say, I'm nervous about going here. Can you go with me, please? What? And my sergeant would go, okay, do they have a court order? And I go, uh, do you have a court order? And the person would go, no, we just broke up, but I'm, I'm nervous. So my sergeant would t he'd look at me and he'd go, tell them, keep your phone with you, bring a friend. If you're nervous, don't go. Or if you're nervous, bring a friend. And if something bad happens, call us. We're not your bodyguard. Good luck. And I said, <laughs> okay. And I'd repeat it and say, good luck. And they're like, this is crazy. And I'm like, okay, well, then don't go. We're not your bodyguard. We don't get paid to do bodyguard services, which is funny because sometimes we do get paid to do bodyguard services, like in Charlottesville. Right. But even if we're there, we're not fucking future crimes division. We're not going to go, um, which car is going to drive off the road on the sidewalk? Uh, we can't. And if we know, we, we can't stop you from doing that. So we're there to help, sure, sometimes. But that's why people carry guns, because you can't fit a cop in your pocket. We're not going to be there before bad things happen. We can't predict bad things from happen. We sometimes try to do what we call pre preventative patrol. Like, I'll patrol my neighborhood so that if someone's thinking, like, maybe I'll rob this neighborhood tonight, and they see me, maybe they go the other way. But with enough effort, you're going to rob someone anyways, whether I'm there or not. And you'll just find a way around me. I can't be ever, everywhere at once, and none of us can. So that's my short take on it. Uh, unless you guys got anything else, um, you can do final notes. And Ox, you can carry us out. Well, what what was that? What's that quote we always hear? Like, don't go stupid, stupid places, places with, and do stupid things with stupid people. <laughs> right. <laughs> say that. Say that again. <laughs> don't do stupid things in stupid places with stupid people, and even at stupid times, also works. Because yes, you, I mean, if you're walking down the sidewalk and you're, you know, practicing for boot camp and you have a backpack full of sand, if it's twelve o'clock noon and you're jogging through your neighborhood with a backpack. It's probably not as weird as jogging through a neighborhood at 2 a.m. with a backpack. Because I'm definitely right. going to stop you and say, hey, what are you doing? So, uh, yeah. Uh, and what's funny, too, is people say, I'm nervous about getting mugged. I'm nervous about getting shot. Uh, what if this? And I say, listen, 99% of the things that I deal with every single day on shift is stupid people doing stupid shit with other stupid people for stupid reasons that they cook up themselves. It's very, this is a term I say a lot. You, I don't even know if you guys know that I say this a lot, but a legitimate victim. Do you know what that is? No. So that's like, you know, I heard that this, this poor young lady had uh, her car hijacked from her. Okay. Well, when we show up on scene and we go, who stole your car? She goes, well, I don't know. I don't know him. I mean, I only just met him. And I go, oh, so you do know him. Well, we, I had known him. 
Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> well, I don't know his name. W well, you met him. D wait, did he? Did you ever give him permission to use your car before? Well, yeah, before, but not now. Okay, before when? Well, the, the other day. When? Yesterday. So you gave him permission to use your car yesterday? Yes. Did he have keys to your car? Yes. Did you tell him he can't use your car today? No. So this, you think this is a, a carjacking? Yes. Oh, okay, so you're the victim, right? Well, yeah. So now I'm here, and you're taking up my time. You put yourself in this mess, and the news sees, oh, this poor girl got carjacked. Well, no. She gave some scumbag who she just met a key to her car, and she went to get in it, and he went to get in it at the same time, and they didn't fight each other, but he's bigger, so he kind of leaned her out of the way, gets in the car, drives away. It's not a carjacking. It's not, it's not even a battery. It's not even... I can't even arrest him for punching like an assault and battery. It's not a punch. There's no intent to injure. And she gave him permission to use the car. So that's what you call a legitimate victim. A legitimate victim would be, I'm a rule-following citizen. I drive to McDonald's. I'm in the drive through I've never hurt a soul in my life. I follow all the rules. Some crazy man with a gun came up, shoved a gun in my face. I've never seen him before. He said, get out of the car. He tried to shoot me. I got out of the car. He stole my car. That's a carjacking. What I've seen mm -hmm. several times is the one I explained to you first, which is a crazy person doing a crazy thing that set themselves up for drama ended up having drama. Go figure. So those are the types of things that I deal with. Nine out of ten calls. So well, I, we don't very it, often see legitimate victims. So like the people in Charlottesville, you know who didn't get run over? People that were living their lives elsewhere. People that weren't squaring off as two groups against each other that required the police to act as their bodyguards. People that were busy building businesses and busy studying and busy going to school and busy making money, they didn't get run over that day. Now, I'm not saying don't protest, but your guy, your Black Lives Matter guy you just quoted said, they allowed us to square off against each other. Okay, well then don't square off against each other. <laughs> Problem right. solved. Right. It's like... Are you are you in kindergarten? Come on, the, like, do you need the police there to hold you back? We're not. We, come on, we've we we've, we've graduated past kindergarten. Let's go. Yeah, some of us have. <laughs> <laughs> some of us, not some all of us. All right. Well, those are those are great points. Uh, I don't know how you sort through all the um, all that uh, you know interview and whatnot. It kind of made my head hurt listening to you describe that. <laughs> It's a, we have we have legitimate patients, and they're far between. I mean, most of our calls are kind of BS, but you know, it is what yeah. it is. Still got to go. Yep, and you still got to treat it like it's the real deal. All right, folks. Well, well I'm ready, uh, Ox, you ready to wrap us up? So thanks for tuning in to this special brief edition of the Liberty Mastermind Podcast. Want to share some thoughts with you this evening. Uh, we are on Twitter, we're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, iTunes now. So go check us out. And uh, Google Play. And Google Play. And subscribe, you know, like, rate, do all the good stuff if you found value and share with your friends. And we will be back for more. Thanks for tuning in.